Hey, this is Pat Mastriani from Degrassi, Joey Jeremiah, and you're listening to Droids Canada. Hey gang, Ralph Garman here. This is Inspector Gadget. Hello, this is Andrew Chalmers, the writer and doctor in Doctor Who Dark Journey. <laughs> Hello, this is Dr. Steve. Hey, what's cracking, y'all? It's your boy J-Rock. This is James DeVal. Hey, what's the sitch? This is Kim Possible. This is Jeremy Taggart. I'm Chris Holden-Reed. I'm Commander Shepard. Hey, I'm DJ Jenny Rock. And I'm Neil Young. Hey, this is Andrew Cassess. Hey, this is Pat Mastriani from Degrassi, Joey Jeremiah. And- <laughs> This is the evil Dr. Bad Vibes. Then this is Messy Bear. And this is more from X-Men. Hi, this is Robert Carradine. This is Sean Gunn. Hey, it's Zach Callison. Hey, everyone. It's Tammy Stronach from The NeverEnding Story. Uh, everybody, this is the Governator. Listen, I'm telling you this, okay? So listen to me carefully. You're listening to Droids Canada. Can you believe that? I can't believe you're listening to it. Come with me if you want to live. Warning. Listener discretion is advised. That means there's a lot of fucking swearing. Hello. <laughs> All right, here we are, Con Stranger. I am Dan Mo. I'm here with Droids Canada. I am here at the very first ever Tri City Super Con in Kitchener, Ontario. I have found Pat Mastriani. I have found Tara Spencer Nairn. And uh, we're going to talk everything Comic Con today. So, uh, Pat, how you doing? I see you, you've been doing the Comic Con circuit for a little while. Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it for many years now. In the last couple of years, I've also included some of my old Degrassi alum to join me uh, around uh, Canada, thanking uh, our fans for 30 years of uh, letting us into their homes. And Tara, this is uh, something kind of newer to you now? This is very new, so I'm counting on Pat. That's why I'm sitting beside Pat. He's going to give me all the tips. So, so I'm screwing this up. So Pat is kind of more like the, the, the Miyagi now. He's kind of bringing you into the fold and, and showing you how the whole inter, interworkings of the Comic-Cons work. Yes, and I will be going, I will be, uh, what is it? Waxing Wax on. on. And waxing off. Wax off. And will, send the floor. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. And I'll be standing on some weird post with my leg up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, with the, the success of Corner Gas, now that is like absolute Canadian is what Corner Gas is about. And what was it? The, uh, the, the late, great Jack Layton even did a, a campaign poster based on the Corner Gas, kind of one of the, uh, the season posters. Now, do you find that uh, that is something that really brought you to the forefront of uh, your Canadian celebrity status? You know what? I, the, the success of, of Corner Gas is kind of just a mystery to all of us. And Brent always has this joke. He's like, if I, I knew exactly what it was that made it a success, he's like, don't you think I'd just keep on doing it with other shows? And it was just the timing was right. Um, the show was r- right. Um, it's a funny show. It's well written. And I think it can be enjoyed from like an entire family can watch that show. Mm-hmm. Like my kids. I let my kids watch the cartoon. Uh, I let them watch the show. But I can also understand the humor on a very different level. See, with that show, it has, you know, it has all of your seasons. And, you know, when the seasons kind of start to run its course, then you come out with the movie and people still want more. And then you come out with the animated series. So that seems to be one of those kind of like Canadiana style programs that has that everlasting, you know, material to it. The same as Pat, you with Degrassi as well. Because still, now you have Degrassi that's come out, Degrassi Junior High, you have Degrassi High, you have, uh, you know, the next generation, and then you have the second version of next generation. Still to this day, when people say Degrassi, the face that is seen is you. Well, you know, I think the, the reason that there, we have shows that have such longevity is because we can adapt with the times. Um, I often say in my panels that I think every generation deserves its version of Degrassi because kids today are very different from kids from the 80s or 90s. Um, and, you know, and, and again, with, with uh, Corner Gas, you, you just have an ensemble uh, of performers that meshed really, really well together. And I think that's where we've been lucky in all our versions of uh, our show is that our cast always meshes really well together. And we, we provide a, a comedy, but we also provide drama. Um, but it's great storytelling as well. Well, of course. Now, with Corner Gas, your, uh, your character with, uh, with uh, Lauren Cardinal, the back and forth that you were able to have makes it seem like you guys have been friends for your entire life let alone. Now, how hard was it to get that chemistry with him, the back and forth? Because part of the, um, like, not generosity, but the, the honesty of that role was the back and forth that you two had, that you start with this character, but these characters have known each other for their whole lives. 
Um, actually, in the show, originally, they ended up actually swapping the characters because originally Karen was supposed to be the goofy, loosey-goosey one, and uh, Lorne, uh, Davis was supposed to be the type A straight arrow, and then as we just got there, I'm clearly like type A and OCD and you know retentive. <laughs> so it just kind of ended up, they just sort of got to know us and sort of flipped the characters. So if you ever look at season one, episode one, you know, it's actually Karen Pelly who's, who's, who's more goofy and silly. But there's weird things about Lauren and I. We both had the same birthday. Not the same year, clearly. <laughs> Not the same year. Uh, we're both left-handed. Um, but it was just magic. There's something about Lauren and I that we just hit it off the second we met. And mm. there's just a mutual love and respect that we have for each other. Um, and I, I care deeply for him, but not in that way. But I, we just care deeply for each other. No, just as, as actors and yeah. as artists and as, yeah. you know, the creation of what it is that you did make. Yeah. Now, uh, moving back to you, Pat, with, uh, with Degrassi. Now, when you are, people are asking you about Degrassi because it's been such a part of, you know, everyone in my age bracket's life growing up. What is it that they ask you more about? About the zit remedy portions of it or about the actual, like, growing up Joey? Um, you know what? I think a lot of people are curious about the dynamics of the actors offset. You know, who really got along well? Did anybody date on the show in real life? They really want to feel like they were part of that environment. And I think when we meet with them as a, as a group, when we uh, come to these conventions uh, as a twosome, threesome, foursome, um, it really makes them feel like it's a homecoming for them or a high school reunion. And they literally feel like they're, they're home again when they touch us, shake our hands, hug us. Uh, and for many of them, it was a virtual high school experience for them because they were either socially awkward in their real lives or they didn't have many friends growing up. Uh, it, it was a very difficult time being a teenager in the 80s, and, and people felt alone and scared and, and not as confident as they do as an adult. So when they see us, they feel like, oh, my God, there's my old friend that I haven't seen in a long, long time. So I think that aspect for me is the, the most important part that I feel I connect with my fans in that way. Mm -hmm. I completely understand the, the growing up awkward. And back in the you know late 80s, early 90s, growing up awkward, you were just an outcast. Now growing up awkward, there's more exception, like you're more accepted, you know, specifically with this whole Comic-Con, you know, genre and, and, and atmosphere that goes on. That really embraces that whole concept of that. Now I do, like with the uh, old shows of Degrassi, you know, turn on, you know, much music or much uh, MTV Canada, and you see the old ones, and it's it's similar to when you hear a song from your youth, where this kind of brings back a certain time. You know, I remember episodes of Degrassi that brings back certain, you know, oh my God, that's when this was going on in your life, and it's very similar to a you know when you're listening to certain songs. Now, um, about the Zit Remedy, okay. so I see you have uh, your <laughs> your merch here, so. I um, The first time that I got to interview Pat was a few years ago, and I bought the Zit Remedy shirt. So I went down that year to Disney. I have one of those Disney families. We go every year, and I wore the Zit Remedy shirt while I'm walking through the Magic Kingdom. No word of a lie, I was stopped over 50 times going, oh, my God, the Zit Remedy, that's awesome. And I'm like, I got the shirt from Pat Mastriani, and it was so absolutely awesome. So, And these were also people from the United States, and that th they know that show. Now... You know, do you feel that that whole, you know, the whole concept of the Zit Remedy, that, you know, that goofy, fun band that, you know, that has made a long lasting impression on people even south of the border? Yeah, I, you know what? It amazes me how much people really love that. I don't know if it's novelty or if it's we all grew up in that time frame where we all wanted to be rock stars or we all wanted to be successful in one way or another, be it an actor or, or a comedian or, or a musician. And uh, we all knew that the Zit Remedy had no talent. We all knew that they weren't going to go anywhere. But we can appreciate that desire to succeed, that passion to, to have as a child or as a, a, a youngster. Here's a photograph I have on my phone of a fan wearing a Zit Remedy t-shirt at a Motley Crue concert. That's amazing. And are you kidding me? Like, I, I love when I hear stories like that where they wore their shirt and people from around the world recognize the name they recognize that you're obviously Canadian and they come up to you and they know Degrassi so it's it, it's a testament I mean I love it I love the fact that it'll always be remembered fondly I'm always asked to sing that damn song which I never do <laughs> but uh, I mean I, I do love the fact that what's um, it gonna take how much how, how much, much? How much? Yeah, well, no sometimes I'll do it when I'm <laughs> with my friend Stefan Brogren who played snake but uh, yeah I do get often stopped in the street to be asked to sing that song but to give you an idea of how iconic Degrassi is too is that it was a part of my mother-in-law's wedding speech like at our wedding so there's this this infamous story 
between um, my husband and his mom when they were younger and it was the episode where Spike gets pregnant mm. and they were talking about teenage pregnancy and then after the episode Spike comes on and it says hey you know this didn't happen to me in real life this just happened in the show but like parents you know you should really sit down and talk to your kids about like sex and, and, and you know protection and stuff like that this is really serious so my husband's mom who is a teacher and turns the TV off and she goes well Josh you know, I feel like, uh, you know, we should talk about this. Is there anything that you would like to ask me um, about sex? <laughs> and my husband turns to his mother and goes, yes. Could you and dad be quieter next time? Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and she told that story at our wedding. Awesome. I have I have my parental Degrassi story as well yeah. with the um, uh, Shane jumping off the bridge. Yeah. The... Um, now, you know, son, I know that when you're in high school and you're able to get alcohol or, or drugs without me knowing, just want you to know that the door's always open to talk with the no question asked. And that actually, like, I have now say that to my kids, yeah. that, you know, it's just the keep a keep an open dialogue about it so we can talk. You don't have to be afraid to talk to dad. Dad's not, you know. See, so many lessons from Degrassi. And I think that's all that Degrassi really wanted to do is just o open up a dialogue. Because we had a lot of parents watching the show with their kids. Uh, and, and I think it's great that that just start started or sparked the conversation mm -hmm. between uh, parent and, and child. Uh, and hopefully that still does it uh, today as well. So that's gone from the 80s, you know, to the 90s, to the to the 2000s. And now, and now Corner Gas is starting to do that same thing. People well, I don't know continue. if they're sparking con uh, conversations. Oh, you know. no, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about that part of Canadian culture oh, yeah. of... You know, starting that, like, you know, people wanting more, as I said. Now, how's it going with the uh, animated series? The animated series is awesome. So we're in the middle of shooting or doing the second season right now. Um, and I kind of feel like now that we're animated, it's sort of, there, <laughs> there's something permanent about that. There's there's a, a legacy in that, that you're, you're now animated. And I also love it in that, like, I will never age now because I'm just a cartoon, right? Mm. I am ageless. I am just going to be this forever. So that's kind of cool. So you've now gone the full gambit of, you know, from, from real life to animated, you know, then maybe back to real life, just do the continuous circle. <laughs> the circle of life. Yeah. Now, do you have anything else that you're working on after uh, Animated Corner Guys? Um, I've just been doing sort of little projects here and there, um, you know, Canadian shows and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely keeping busy. You just worked with Megan Follows, didn't you? I did just work with Megan Follows. Megan Follows, Megan Follows yeah, on a Lifetime Christmas movie. Um, I got to interview Megan Follows at um, Fan Expo, and I called her Megan Follows. And she's yeah. like, no, it's Megan. I'm like, oh, research. And it's a tough one. I know. I thought it was Megan. And luckily, before I said anything, she was like, hi, I'm Megan. So happy to meet you. And I was like, aha. Mm -hmm. See, I have my, my name's Dan. You can't really can't mess really that mess one up. up. You know, Pat. Yeah, you know, we got that as well with you. Megan was kind enough to remember me uh, from 1988 when I won my Gemini Award. She gave me my Gemini Award on oh, stage when I won Best Actor um, uh, at the Gemini Awards. And so I reminded her that. I go, do you remember 1988? She said, barely. <laughs> Please stop asking me questions yeah. about 88. I just said to her, I said, you know, you got you and uh, Paul Gross handed me my uh, acting award and motivated Aww. me to continue acting for, you know, 25 years. So d you, I, I have you to blame for that. <laughs> And she just is a sweetheart. Good for her. Now then, the doors are about to open here at Tri-City yeah. Supercon, so I'm going to let you uh, go to work now. I'd like to thank you both for your time. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Pat Mastriani, Tara Spencer Nairn, and uh, we're Tri-City Supercon Kitchener. Uh, everyone come by and say hi. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. His eardrums were scientifically altered for world peace. His ears are more finely tuned than yours or mine. He can listen to a podcast from a mile away. He is the most dedicated podcast fan in the world. I do not always listen to podcasts, but when I do, I prefer the Touch of Mom Network. Keep listening, my friends.